Hey, it's Aaron, and I want to preface this video by saying thank you very much to all the DSA members and everybody else that's in a post-capitalist group who's been using this climate strike initiative to gain more members and to basically recruit a ton of people into their ranks. Thank you very much. You are the heroes, and it's activism and work like the things that you do that seriously make change. Now, here's the video. Hey, it's Aaron, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about Greta Thunberg, because I asked some questions about her yesterday, and I got some really interesting responses from my comment section, and it made me really um, realize the mantra that I've held to for a long time, uh, that you cultivate your own audience, is really true. When you're on any sort of social media platform, you are the one that is cultivating your audience, and personally, I think I've done a pretty good job at that because I got a lot of really interesting, really thought-provoking, really well-informed responses to a lot of the questions that I was uh, that I was asking, and I want to talk about a few of them today. So, the main uh, question that I was asking, or at least one of the main questions that I was asking, was why now? Why is all of this happening now and not five years ago or even five months ago? Why is this initiative gain gaining attention and not any other initiative like um, Extinction Rebellion or any number of other ones? And one of the main themes that I noticed throughout my entire comment section is that Primarily, this is happening because most people are thinking that we have finally reached critical mass. We need to do something now, or else we're not going to be able to save any of the generations in the future. We need to make a difference today, because tomorrow might not ever come. That's basically the general consensus of what I heard from all of you out there. And to that point... I 100% agree. If you, like I said yesterday, if you haven't gone and joined in any sort of group, in any sort of activism out there in this climate strike initiative or any other initiative that's in your local area, I implore you to please do so because it is imperative to us to make that difference, to make that change today or else we won't have a tomorrow to look forward to. The other question that I asked, the other main question that I asked, was why is the mainstream media paying attention to Greta and this whole climate change initiative when they don't pay attention to basically anything else in the entire world? The Hong Kong protests basically get no coverage, and what coverage it does get is very biased towards the United States or towards the West. You don't hear about any of the actions that are happening in anywhere in the Middle East, in Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, you don't even hear about the wars that you're in. And personally, and honestly, you don't even hear about the things that are happening in your own country, like Bernie Sanders going to so many rallies and making sure that certain bills are passed and so forth. You don't even hear about those things, and that's happening in your own backyard. But you hear about this. Why is this situation different? Why is this the thing that caught mainstream attention? Why is it something that everybody wants to talk about? Is it because it's just so large that we can't look away, that we have to talk about it because everybody needs to say something? Well, possibly. But it also has to do with something that the commenters so insightfully stated yesterday. And that's the most obvious point, is that they want us to fight each other instead of them. This is another divisive tactic that the elites are using to make sure that we are attacking one another and blaming one another for these problems instead of blaming the actual situation. Now, Greta, of course, is a different story. She is actually out there blaming the real problem, blaming the elites that put us here, blaming the people that need to be blamed so we can actually move forward. Of course, I'd, I'm not entirely sure if her solution is going to pan out. She has said that a technocratic solution isn't going to solve a catastrophic problem, just like I have said many times in the past. Does that necessarily mean that we are going to completely eradicate capitalism to destroy those 100 companies that are creating 70% of the world's pollution? I don't know. I know that that is the solution, but what I also do know is that the media is looking at this as a way for us to basically fight one another. It's really simple. The liberals get to have this spokeswoman, this spokesperson, as the person that they get to all look at and say, look at how wonderful they are. This young person is finally standing up to the machine and saying, I'm going to fight back and we, can, we need to do something. But it's safe because they don't hear that anti-capitalist message. 
even if it's there, they don't hear it. So they think that this is something that they can just go do on the weekend. Hey, we get a Friday off. Let's make up a fun sign and go march in the streets. This is something that we can do. And then nothing else will really change in the system. And we get to go on making ourselves feel as though we're morally superior because we get to march in a parade and we get to say that we're doing woke things and we get to look really good in front of the cameras. Case in point would be Justin Trudeau who decided to take this opportunity to get some photo ops and some press uh, while he marched along in the uh, Climate Strike Initiative as well while rightfully getting berated by bystanders about how he's pushing through a pipeline that is likely going to, well, not likely, guaranteed to leak and destroy massive swaths of uh, indigenous land and waterways and everything like that. So it's a great way for the woke liberals to be able to get together and say, hey, look, we're doing something. It's going to be maybe a technocratic solution. Maybe we're going to create some sort of special technology that'll fix the problem. And just us holding our signs will make that difference. That'll make that change. And that's the way that they think about it. And the conservatives, of course, they look at Greta as being this perfect poster child of everything that they hate about the left. Not only is she young, 16 years old, she's also a woman. Not all conservatives, of course, think this way, but, you know, some, of course, do. And you already know that you don't have to pay attention to anything that they say because they're young. They're women. And this person in particular happens to have Asperger's. So, of course, people like Steven Crowder and other mal uh, mentally defunct conservative pundits like him are going to make crude, crass remarks about her intelligence and say things like, autism and so forth to make that somehow the a point against her and of course you're also going to see a lot of other things happening as well like them saying that well all of this is just a hoax nothing different from something that happened i don't know during 2012 or 2000 where people thought that the world was going to end because of uh, the mayan calendar or y2k respectively we can basically look at all of this and say, hey, look, this is not real. This isn't actually a real problem. This is all just a hoax. This is all just made up. It's a false flag. It's something to make everybody just get upset about, to get worried, to get scared. It's something to make everybody freak out. But it's not real. It's just another one of those crazy conspiracy theories that come about every so often. But the difference here, and I'm going to talk about this for just one second, because that is a prevalent thing that has come up in my comment section several times in this, uh, in the last video. The difference between this being a conspiracy theory and those incidences, such as 2012 or 2000 being conspiracy theories, is that this isn't something that we're saying is going to end the world 10 years from now. We're saying that in 10 years from now, we have reached a point of no return. There is no end date. There is no catastrophic comet that's going to come and strike the earth and destroy everything. There isn't some Nostradamus prediction about, I don't know, fucking giraffes flying down from Mars and killing everybody with laser beams from their eyes. That isn't this. That's nothing to do with this. This is a prediction that has happened through scientific reckoning, through the scientific method. They have predicted that in 10 years from now, we are going to reach a point of no return where cyclical events are going to just continue to make things worse and worse until we are, until we are basically entering into an apocalypse. But that's not going to happen in 10 years from now. That's not going to happen anywhere close to 10 years from now. That's when it starts. And honestly, it's already started. If you look at everything that's happening right now, we are seeing incredible problems all over the entire planet. But to get back to my main point, this is happening. This is being spoken about because it's a way to fight each other. It's a way to divide the people and it's a way to make each other angry at one another instead of those hundred companies that are actually creating the problem, instead of all of the elites that put us in this position, instead of all of the politicians that take the donations from big money donors who decide to make all of these different 
um, uh, who decide to allow all of these relaxations on the laws and unfettering of capitalism to allow us to be in this situation. All of those are reasons why this is happening. All of those are ways that they can make us fight each other. And that's basically why this is gaining mainstream attention and not other initiatives and not other things. It, has, it happens to be bigger than any other event, and it also happens to work perfectly to divide one another. It's really sad that the only reason why we'd actually talk about something like this is because they want to use it against us. Anyway, that's my show. My name is Aaron. If you do get a chance, please check me out on Patreon. Every dollar does help fund this show. And thanks for watching.